Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. I just want to say that I am recording near the pool again. It is the evening time and I typically record my videos after work, especially if they're sit downs for the most part. A lot of my talking videos that I have in the coming future are being done after work. So I only get a limited time of this daylight because I do love natural lighting and I love natural lighting in a video and I want my channel to be like this chill neutral space. So in today's video, I'm going to get into some HR pros and cons and then a little bit of tips of how to get into the field or if you're thinking about making a career change. When I posted my day in the life video and my year on time with success, I received a lot of feedback about HR, people who are interested, and then just other conversation topics regarding school. And it was just really cool. I'm the kind of person that I love conversation. I love talking to people. I like getting other people's perspectives. So with that being said, I also want to get into the six major, I would say, branches of HR, and that is compensation and benefits recruitment and staffing, employee relations, which is a personal favorite of mine, learning and development, and then laws, compliance, and HR, and culture and satisfaction. So I like what I do right now at my job currently. If you guys don't know, I'm an HR coordinator for a construction company. It is an entry-level position. I do get paid very well for an entry-level position. I am thinking that I am ready to kind of move up now because this is now two years of HR that I have under my belt. I was an admin assistant at Tarleton State University for the HR department, and then I was a market coordinator, so I couldn't really fall into an HR gen or any other specialized role because I didn't have that HR coordinator part that I feel like is more important than the admin assistant portion of working in HR and kind of getting your foot in the door. I like that as an HR coordinator now, I do not do any type of assisting. In my job description, it says a lot of like, I assist, I assist, I assist. I don't assist, I do, okay? This is something that I think when I fell into the role because of how much experience I had, I'm way ahead of what the position is requiring. I definitely know that my director notices that because we actually had a meeting last week which went really well. That was kind of like a point of topic, like you're kind of doing a lot of stuff. And I deal primarily with Spanish speaking employees. I am bilingual. I get a lot of calls from employees who speak Spanish and who need assistance with benefits and just general questions that they may have in a day to day. The supervisors have a lot of trust in me. I have built a very, very strong relationship with a lot of my Spanish speaking supervisors. Like we're working with them, I love it. Like they don't ever give me a hard time. I have so much respect for them and for even all the labor that they do and how hard they work for our company. So I do my absolute best to pretty much go above and beyond for them and just making things easier because they don't have that person that understands them that they can come to. Now I do have another coworker who does speak Spanish, but she doesn't really assist in that department. So I'm really the, the first point of contact for everything. So I absolutely love that. And honestly, it has helped me a lot with my confidence. Another pro is that I like being able to work from home when I need to. That's really nice. It's a lot of independent work. So there's a lot of things that you do that you're kind of like in charge of. And I don't know, I think with our generation of people, I'm 25. So if you fall into those that category, a lot of us really do thrive and work well off of working alone. Now that does not mean that I could not work in a team. And it's also really, really good for when you are being measured on how well you're performing year to year or on a quarterly basis, depending on when you guys do reviews. Every day is something new. Even though I have my same day-to-day -day tasks, you will never ever know <laughs> what you're gonna walk into into the office. I don't know what kind of phone call I'm going to get that day. I don't know what kind of interesting requests that I haven't really dealt with Compensation. So with a bachelor's degree, with adding certifications, if you pursue your master's and throw that onto your resume, you can get compensated pretty quickly and you can make six figures pretty quickly. I don't care what anybody says. If you want money, you will find it. You will work for it and you will do what you need to do. That's kind of how I feel about my job now. I'm already looking and getting ideas of how I need to move so that I can make that money. I definitely wouldn't knock any kind of entry level position though just because you want money fast or you or you don't want to get i'm trying to say that i just don't want people to get discouraged i think a lot of times people get discouraged and they're like oh well you know i stayed here and i did this no and i would also say that you if you're going to start an entry level and you know you're going to want to move up and don't have a lot of experience definitely try to find smaller companies to work with because you can move up which quicker. i think is kind of like why i'm also in a good spot because we are a smaller company it's just something that i'm not going to really take for granted the next thing is that you're going to learn a lot. Learn as much as you can and become an expert in every single piece. Because let me tell you something, 
if you guys ever decide to go on a brick and mortar business okay not be like an, a social media entrepreneur that's another video for another day but a true to life brick and mortar business why wouldn't you want to know your hr i want to stuff. say that one of my pros that i have on a personal level i love that there's a lot of problem solving and critical thinking that goes into the job you have to use more than just logic and really makes me a better employee as I continue on with my journey in HR. Human resources is an environment that thrives off of processes and organization. So if you are a type A person, I promise you, you will thrive, okay? I am the old school, write down a list, cross it out, check it off. That is like, girl, like that, like that turns me on. I love being organized. I love when things are clean and crisp. And even if the paperwork that I have to follow up with or a supervisor that I need to reach out to is still done in a manner of which I still feel like I'm not going outside of my plan of execution. That it's just, everything's based off of processing. Something else that I want to say is that the people that you tend to meet in HR, whether they are people within your company or outside, it's pretty cool. You can have a luncheon and meet the president or the COO or the CEO or the CFO. Like you're just meeting all of these people. And I think with HR, that's a perk. I think that when something is going on within the company or something is like being planned or there's a huge event, we get to be a part of all of those things. First con that I want to mention is anything dealing with terminations or having to deliver any sort of bad news. I currently do not deal with having to terminate anyone. Most of the time, employees will just resign. I haven't seen anything come through where we had to mediate because it's construction. So a lot of times those voluntary terminations, they're typically gonna be rehirable employees. It is a stressful job. So there's a lot of moving pieces in HR, whether you have a big team or a small team, you can deal with a lot of stress. I would say just manage your time and just really have those conversations with your teammates and see what you guys can help each other with. The reputation that we have about being lazy is something that just gets under my skin that I feel like I work so hard in my role now to really not be that person. I don't wanna be the reason why we're known for the HR team that can't get things done. When I say that, I go above and beyond for these employees and the supervisors. A con for a small team is that you're spread too thin. A con for a large team, you're pretty much stuck within your role. So short and sweet on those two. Laws, that the laws are constantly changing, whether it's federal, state. It's a lot to take in. And I'm glad that at least with my team now, we're pretty good about keeping in the loop and to make sure that we're always in regulation. My tips for working in HR and getting into it if you're interested in doing HR. The first thing that I would say is that it is pretty competitive. It took me a minute to get into this HR coordinator position and when I got it, I snatched it around, honey. Get certified. So if you are interested, get certified, get your PHR or get your SHRM CP or both. I personally plan on getting both. I've spoken about this in another video. I plan on taking my PHR exam by the end of this year and then taking my SHRM CP next spring and just really preparing myself for that. Set yourself apart from any other candidate. I understand that people can work HR and not have a bachelor's degree, but if you have one, use that to your advantage. Use that to get in where you can. I think it is great when you can network and meet people who have those connections of like maybe a job that you're interested in. I think that people that work in HR, a lot of us pretty much have the same personalities. So it's always fun to meet other people and sometimes let loose and just talk to one another. And just, we have so many similar stories and experiences. And it's just something that is, it's great. Like definitely network, join groups, even on Facebook or LinkedIn where you can really put yourself out there. If you feel stuck at your job, it is okay to leave. Jobs are so quick to replace you. So it is okay for you to leave if you know that you're not getting anything else. You're an expert at this point with the position. Leave, go find something else. Go find a specialty that you are interested in. Find another company that's going to pay you what you're looking for. Don't be complacent. My last tip that I want to just end it on that note, be the kind of person that when you leave and when you decide to leave, your department is going to feel it. Like it's going to be like a gaping hole because no one else could do what you did. You know what I'm saying? Like that's something I actually learned from my boyfriend. He always says that. He's like, I want to be the kind of guy that when I leave, whatever I do, 
if I go to another company, if I get promoted, that they feel it. They feel that pressure or they feel that like, damn, he's not here anymore. Who can we get that's going to be on it the way he was? You know, who's going to level up? to what he did a lot of times maybe there is somebody who's going to come in and fill those shoes but when you have that confidence that poise that that ideology you will really excel and i think that's just such a big part of working in general and being a young professional and putting yourself out there and getting yourself into a different mode that you've never been in before that is my spill for this video that is my take on hr kind of how i look at it based on my experiences thank you guys so much for watching this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe and follow me on instagram i've never said that before but i <laughs> always forget to say it and i will see you all in the next video bye